If you have your Bible, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. We're going to read from Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 to verse 3, and then we jump straight to 6. I'm going to do some revision here. You know, when we come, you know, sometimes we have faith in the program and not have faith in God. When we come, we must make sure that our faith is in Him. Let, let me give you an illustration. How many of you ever go to a shopping mall, then your Wi-Fi start of, start of uh, go to the, 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 the shopping centre Wi-Fi? Right? How many of you know what, I, uh, what I'm talking about? You, you, you come in, you know, we've suddenly from 4G, suddenly it got hooked on to Wi-Fi, you know, city square. Right? And then, doesn't work. My wife will say, say this, hey, why doesn't work? Huh? Hey, why doesn't work? How come I cannot receive any text anymore? Because it wrongs, it, it goes to the wrong channel. Okay? Here's what I'm afraid of. Uh, you know, this, I'm going to be talking about faith. Faith in terms of connection. And next week, we're going to talk about can logic and faith coexist? And then the balance of logic and faith. Because sometimes we think that, you know, being spiritual doesn't mean that we are illogical. No, it doesn't mean that. There's a place for logic. That's why the Bible says reason. Amen. But then, can it coexist in the same place? Of course it can. We're going to show you how through the scripture. But at the same time, I, I'm just concerned that when we come, we are disconnected. Or our frequency is on the wrong channel and therefore, gifts of God. Therefore, you see, there's more than what we can see here in this place. If you understand what I mean. There are angels. There are gift things waiting to be given to you. Encouragement, healing, ready to be given to you if you plug into the right channel. Amen. I, I hope that you understand there's more than meets the eye than what you see in the physical world. Okay? You know, and, and that's the thing that I'm afraid of, that we come every week and then we forgot to turn on our faith. Or our faith is on the wrong channel. Our faith is on our rituals. Our faith is because I'm in the present, because I come, I, I put my faith in my actions rather than I put my faith in God. Because it is only when you put your faith in God then miracle signs and wonders can follow. Are you with me here today? Am I making sense here? So, you know, sometimes you cannot just go autopilot. You are awesome in this place. Mighty God. Oh, it's a good song to sing. It's been a while. And then your mind still are far away and you're catching up in the spirit. And, and, and you are, you, you, you're not sure what you're doing. Some of you are thinking, oh, it's a party. Oh, I can't wait for the service. I hope pastor don't preach that all long. You know, and then you're wondering, why no miracle signs and wonders? And why my prayers aren't answered? Just because you pray doesn't mean God will answer you. Let's, let, let's turn to the scripture here. And let's let, let God's word speak for itself. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. Who are the elders here? The Old Testament saint. And then in verse 3, it says this, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that, that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. That means there is such a thing as an invisible world. Hello? There is such a thing. And to unlock the invisible world, it requires faith. Everybody say, Amen. <laughs> okay, then it goes on to this. But without faith. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, but without faith. It is impossible to please Him. For he that cometh to God must believe that He is. That He is. He is God. <laughs> and that He is a rewarder. Of them that diligently seek Him. Amen. I want to talk to you today, what is faith? Because I'm going to go back to the basic again. Amen. This whole week, we're going to talk about where does logic plays because we are living in a world that's very intellectual. And then, you know, you can go to the extreme of, oh, throw away your brain and be spiritual. That's not what I'm talking about. And then you can go away to the, you know, be so logical. God is wrong. Let's be realistic. 
until we throw away the faith. And that's a very dangerous place to be. Okay, so we got to find that right balance in our quest in studying the Word of God because it's so relevant because we talk about truth, right? Truth is useless without faith. Amen. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Are you with me here today? Please understand this. I want your answers to be prayed. And my job is, he must increase and I decrease. Because if your faith connection is strong, anywhere you go, you change environments. When your faith connection, when you have a touch of God, when you worship God, how many of you know what I'm talking about? When you go into the presence of the Lord, anything seems to be possible. The impossible seems possible. When there's hopelessness, when you go into the presence and behold how great my God is, suddenly you realize, my goodness, Whatever I'm going through is peanuts compared with what God is. And here's something that, another scripture that I want to read to you. Uh, it's a parable, a contrast. I love this scripture a lot. Luke chapter 18, verse 1 to 8. It goes like this, And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that man ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying there was a city, a judge, which feared not God, nor regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me, my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubled me, I will avenge her, lest her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge say, and shall not God avenge his own elect which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I want you to notice this in verse 8. This is the scripture that got me shaken up. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, I want you to underline the word. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man come, shall he find faith on the earth. You know why we need faith? Because it's going to get worse. Thank you, huh? You're, you're okay with me? <laughs> I mean, there is a hope. Amen, okay? That is coming down the road, but it may not be in this life. Okay? Every, everybody say, praise the Lord. You know, we've seen too much Hollywood movies. It says they will live happily ever after. True, but may not be in this life. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Come on, activate your faith right now, everybody. Activate. Put your faith in God's word. Put out the faith in the finished work on Calvary. Put your faith, amen, in God. Not, not, not in, in my preaching, but put your faith in the word of God. Faith right now. Come on, atmosphere is changing right now. Release the gift of faith, Father, in the name of Jesus. Release the gift of faith. Lord, let the invisible world appear real to us right now. Hallelujah. Come on, enter into worship right now. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, we enter with thanksgiving. We enter with praise. I don't want to go through the motion. But God, I thank you for the work in Calvary that I can now come boldly before the throne of grace. And Lord, your word beat me to come. Come. Lord, we come, Lord Jesus, right now. We believe. In the name of Jesus, come on. Let's give God the praise. Let's give God the glory and the honor. Amen. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. You know, faith is such an important ingredient that Jesus have to pray for Simon in Luke chapter 22, verse 32. Simon, that your faith should not fail. In the most crucial time of our lives, Jesus prayed for Simon. Say, I pray. You know, he did not pray for deliverance. He, did not, he prayed that your faith will not fail. Amen. And here's what I've been praying for my own children. Father, in times of crisis, I pray that their faith will not fail. 
Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. So, so again, we realize this, that without faith, it is impossible to please Him. So it's a big deal. So what is faith? I mean, without faith, I mean, if my prayer is going to be answered, it's got to pray in faith. I'm not going to beg God. I, I remember Brother Willoughby says, if you want to receive the Holy Ghost, you don't beg. You pray in faith. You yield your tongue. You praise God and pretty soon you don't know what else to say. You yield your tongue and God's going to take over. And that's in faith. Amen. I remember so many times during the crusade, he will stop. Remember, you cannot receive the Holy Ghost if your mouth is like, there's no faith. <laughs> Amen. You shut it out, but, but, but you got to use your voice and, and you step into this area called faith. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. You know, again, I, I don't know about you, but when I start to think about those basic things that we used to know, I, I've got to be, start to revisit those Bible studies about faith. <laughs> I, I want to know what faith looks like and what is faith anyway. And, and today we're going to open the book of Hebrews chapter 11 because it's the hall of faith. <laughs> and we're going to go back to some lessons that are pretty elementary and before long maybe, you know, I may not be preaching long but I see where the Holy Ghost go. I have six points. Six points can lead to 12 points. I don't know. So let's see what happens. But let me say one thing. If any point that captures you, you need to receive it right now and say amen. amen. Because you know what? By doing that, listen very carefully right now. That's why you guys got to pay attention in the service. You know, if you want to write notes, great. But, but other than that, you got to pay attention because a miracle may await you if you say amen, healing. You know what? There are times where Jesus has to lay hands on people and pray. There are times, have you noticed this? He will sit down in the mud and then the guy with an eye socket, he put it inside the eye socket and is releasing an anticipation and expectation so that there is faith. And there are times he spoke the word without touching anybody. He said, I don't need to go visit because of your faith. Heal. And likewise, in these last days that we are living in, we cannot lay hands on people. I trust God that we can speak the word of faith. God is able. That's why it's so important many times to study the word of God, to be somebody who can recognize voices. Because I do not want anybody to interrupt my connection with God. Amen. Everybody, are you ready? So we're going to look at the different dimensions of faith. That is found in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Are you all with me? This is going to be a Bible study, but then don't be surprised. I'm saying activate your faith. Let's pray. Okay? This is a school. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is a school. Okay? Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. ESV version. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. So number one, faith is first believing when I don't see it. Amen. Okay? Faith is the visualizing the future in the present. It's seeing it in advance. It's being certain of what we do not see. Amen. So, let me give you a simple illustration. When I pray for my wife, I expect it to happen. So, when I see... Sorry. Oh, you take my phone. Oh, she, sorry, she get distracted with the... When I see her, when I pray, before you pray... Especially when the person is sick, you visualize them healed. You say, oh, sure not. I mean, you entrepreneurs, I mean, maybe I call on Eddie. You won't start your company without faith. If you think it's going to fail, well, Jia won't let you do it. Jia will say, over my dead body and, 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 and go get a job. <laughs> Just like anybody else. You see, I mean, strange enough, we can have faith in starting a business, but we don't have faith in God. He hello? It's seeing the invisible. Amen. 
when I pray, when, when, when we die, we don't have to be afraid. Amen. Because we know that we have a better place. Amen. You know, and, and again, I want to thank all those of you that uh, prayed for my mom. My mom was afraid. You know, she was afraid because she's having sore throat. And thank God she's not having COVID, but uh, she's doing well. She's better. In fact, she called us this morning and said, I want to go home now. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> but, but at the moment, she's afraid. And the first thing that came to mind is that, you know, she is afraid of dying. I mean, all of us have some kind of fear of dying. Let's be honest here. Amen. And I, I need to go back there and reassure her again. Why are you afraid of dying? I mean, I know there's some kind of fear of the unknown, but it shouldn't paralyze us. Amen. Okay, so faith is seeing the future in present time. Amen. Okay, I mean, have you ever wondered, Brent, is there a guarantee that when you cross the road, you won't be knocked down by a, a bus? Right? I mean, life, faith is really more practical than what you think it is. And when I come to God to talk to Him, I believe He listens. This morning, you know, had a time with the Lord. I say, God, what do I need to do? I know you're here. I know you hear me. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, you know, if, if there are times, I, I do understand that there are times when you go into crisis mode, your sickness is pretty weak. Amen. You know, just, just think for a moment. All of you that are technology people, okay, when your Wi-Fi signal is low, what do you do? You go look for where the signal is strong. So where do you go? You go to the router. Come on, everybody say amen. Right, and, and when you go to the router, the signal is so much faster. Amen. Wow, you know, I get maybe 600 megabits. Wow, but when I go further, it's 300. It depends on what you say you are going to. So sometimes when the signal is not clear, you need to hang around with people that have a faith in God. That's why we need a body of Christ that come together today to lift up His name, to create a strong signal. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. When we come together, we come together focused on the Lord. That's why it is so important for us just not to show up and go autopilot. Oh, put my kids there. I'm okay. You know what? You need to activate your faith for a moment. You need to have some hot spots so that your brothers and sisters can tap into that hot spot. Amen. And, and you need to lay hands on each other. Amen. And, and it's okay. You know, I find people very strange. You know, they say, hey, uh, hey, how come not working? Can you turn on your hotspot to let me? I mean, they will humble themselves for a hotspot. But they can't humble themselves. Can you pray for me, brother? I'm, I'm struggling with negative thought. Can you help me? Can you lay your hands? Can you? The Bible goes on to say, confess your faults to one another. Amen. Come on, everybody say, praise the Lord. I mean, here's my concern. Are you more concerned about your 3G or 4G than your connection with God? Or have we lived in our life so much separated from God that it is okay? Oh, Lord, help us. That you have learned to live a carnal life. And say it's okay. My goodness, some of the things, sometimes I can tell you in the spirit where you are at. When you get a personal meeting from me, you know what's it all about. Where's the connection? Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Are, are, are you with me here today? Amen. Again, all these things require faith. I, I love this quote by Warner Von Braun, the father of space age, who built that Atlas rocket and the Saturn rockets that send men to the moon. He once said this. I want you to listen very carefully to what he said. There has never been any significant achievement in human history that was not accompanied by faith. Wow. You want to break through, you got to step out in faith. 
You got to do things that you have never done before. You got to step out and say, God, give me the word, what I need to do. I need to step out in faith. Faith turns dreams into reality. It is believing before I see it, but it is far more than that. Number two, faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 7, by faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen. Haven't seen a drop of rain. At that time, the whole earth was watered by the mist. Move with godly fear, prepare an ark for the saving of the, his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. First example, Noah. Amen. Okay, I don't, I don't understand. You know, that day I was looking at some TikTok video and they criticizing Christianity about some stuff. You know, I look at them and say, wow, that's the wrong representation. I mean, come on. You know, of course, they always talk about the things that, 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 that the world, I mean, some, just because there are some counterfeit doesn't mean all are counterfeits. Amen. Especially about the whole idea of money and all these things. You go on and on. I mean, there are some things that I can't tell you. Sometimes it's by faith. Until you see God providing for you, then you realize, my goodness, God is real. Everybody say, praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, again, Noah, by faith, built an ark to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about something that had never happened before. Faith and obey. Amen. Everybody say, when you have faith, you will obey. Okay? You know, again, the Bible says faith is obeying when I don't quite understand. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. I mean, uh, look, God never asked us to understand it. He said, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding. There are so many times I just felt a check. Don't go this way, just go this way. And I said, well, thank God. Sometimes God roadblocks, uh, put a roadblock in certain avenue in your life to protect you. Yes, Amen. You don't quite understand, why didn't I get that job? Why didn't I get, because you ask God to intervene, right? If it's not the will of God. Yes. Amen. And when God doesn't give you that, <laughs> that job, don't get whiny about it. It could be God's protection. Yes, right. I mean, it may be, you know. Oh, what come? You know, I'm supposed to go music practice, but there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a jam. Could it be that God is trying to prevent you from an accident? There are some things I don't quite understand. I, I still remember very clearly. You know, uh, I mean, okay, I secure. You know, for us, uh, my firstborn, we have that sarong, right, sister? We is it what you call the sarong, Yona? Okay, I know nowadays people don't use it, but that's fine. But at my firstborn, uh, Adora Lee. Okay, we had a, 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 a sarong, you know, and, 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 and God spoke to me very clearly. Doesn't make sense. Everything looked well. Put a mattress below that sarong. Okay. Just obey. La. Then I look at that thing one more time. Everything looks so good. Put it down. The next day when I got up, Adora was on the floor. But thankfully, there's a mattress below Otherwise, Sean would not have a Dora today and he'll be very sad. <laughs> Amen. You see, some things I just don't understand. Some things God challenged me, give. Huh? But we will still give. Huh? Because you got to understand God's way of doing things. You trust me, I prove you. When I say go, just do it. I, have, I don't have time to argue with you. Just do it. In prayer, when you pray, God asks you to release that word. Sometimes I just release. Oh, I, 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 like, like, like for instance, y'all remember the story? I don't know whether y'all remember when I was in, 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 in Parkway Apostolic Church. God gave me a burden for praying for North Korea. 
I got the entire church to pray. Everybody's like thinking, oh, I mean, yeah, I also thinking, why am I asking them to pray in North Korea? Just because God has a burden put in my heart and, I, and got the whole church to release out in prayer. You know, and then, you know, uh, uh, Brother Tim Peters, you all remember Brother Tim Peters, he came on the day in Singapore where North Korea was signing a peace agreement with uh, USA. I was like, wow, isn't that proof? Yeah, don't underestimate what God can put into your spirit. He may be praying for China. He may be praying for Cambodia. You never know. Sometimes I ask God, God, what is the power of my prayer looks like? What is my influence in the spirit light? When you understand what prayer really can do, can travel through time, geographic location, you will spend more time seeking the face of God and learn how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Then there's a guy by the name of Abraham. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place which he would receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Notice here, this is Abraham, 75 years old. Should retire and collect CPF already. Amen. Should relax one corner, but God says, come out. Okay, where are we going? Just go out. I will lead you. Okay, how are we going to explain to my wife? So you know what? Where are we going? Don't know. I heard from God. Well, everybody like, oh, you heard from God. You sleep or not last day. I mean, come on. They were pagans. Eh? You heard from God and he walked. To this day, you know, he just continued to walk. Yeah, how many of you are so glad that he walked out? Because without Abraham, we will not have Messiah seed. Amen. Some things that you do is not for your generation to see the fruit. Oh Lord help me. Abraham never walked into the promised land. But he started something going that the next generation can follow up with it. Amen. You say, oh, I, I, I don't understand, but you know what? My generations may not serve the Lord. I'm telling you, I hear stories about, you know, people that, that serve the Lord, even though their children didn't serve it, but their great-grandchildren found truth. Amen. I say many years later, even though their generations did, but God made a connection. Amen. That somewhere down the road, somewhere down the sea, this person heard about Pentecostal. The grand, great grandmother spoke in tongues and he come and visit. I'm telling you, some things that you do has an effect that is wide, much wider than your lifetime. Everybody say, Praise the Lord. Amen. That's why never underestimate your prayer. Don't know what to pray. Pray for your legacy. Pray for your grandchildren. Pray for your grandchildren, wives. Pray for their descendants. Thank you. That's why I don't understand when people say, Hey, Pastor, how to pray? I say, well, if you know what prayer can do, you stand praying. I mean, like that day I was carrying babies, I start to pray for my unborn grandchild. No guarantee that I can see her. Or her. I don't know. Him or her. I don't know. We still haven't figured that out. <laughs> Amen. But both are okay. Lah. <laughs> but I would like a girl, I tell God. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, so I, I, I'll just pray and pray and pray. You know, then after that, I start to pray for my other grandchildren that I have not seen. And it's possible that I pray this prayer, God, give me an unconditioned love for the unborn. That my heart is settled. You know what? I, if there's one thing that I can give legacy to my children is my prayer. Amen. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. But... Let me say this, there's 1,050 commands of God that doesn't make sense. <laughs> Everybody say, praise God. He says, do this and your life will be blessed. May not be this life, but the future life. You know, so we, we, we got to operate in faith. Everybody say, praise the Lord. For some of you young people here that just have babies like Micah, you know, and so forth, better pray for the husband, uh, the wife, sorry, the wife. You know, you got to pray. Start praying for their future. Amen. Everybody say praise God. You know, and you know what? At times, doesn't 
I feel like it. And I say, God, I, I'm kind of weird about this. But can you prove to thee that my prayer works? I mean, I want to know. I've seen God show me time and time again, make me visit people that say, man, oh, I was praying for Cambodia. God make them make, make known their lives to me. And God wanting to tell us, nothing you do in faith is in vain. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You must understand, it's not how well you pray. It's the God that we pray to that is able to do it. I mean, if you put your faith in prayer, oh, yo, <laughs> it won't amount to anything. But you pray to the God who answers prayer. It's a different dimension. A lot of times, <sighs> Doing the things of God doesn't make sense. Okay, let, 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 let me give you a practical exam, uh, uh, example. I want to thank God for all the musicians, all the MQ personnel that are struggling every week to set this place up. Doesn't make sense, right? Your mind plays games to you. Sometimes I admit, Sometimes I admit, I go through those struggles. I mean, why must I rush myself to music practice when I can celebrate mom's birthday? <laughs> why? Doesn't make sense. Oh, well, why? You know, Brother David, they say you should retire already. <laughs> uh, he's still playing. That's faith. I mean, it doesn't need to be always, oh, it's time to serve the Lord. We struggle. We struggle to serve the Lord. And it's okay. If there's struggling, there's fighting. I mean, uh, 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 that day I saw Brother Shanker, you were there in the music practice, doing the video editing and all those things. i like, man, if it was not for service, you could have just spent time with your family. And I think the rest of us, if we feel our brothers and sisters are carrying the load, we got to stand up and say, maybe, perhaps you guys need to come on the Saturday evening and see what they do. And stop sitting on your seats and relax one corner. And, and, and let's not talk about this. Sunday school. Amen, Bong, where are you? Bong, I saw you, Bong. Yeah. I mean, trying to take care of your kids while you're having service. My goodness, some of your kids. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to feel in the blanks. <laughs> you feel in the blank. <laughs> They're unpredictable. But then, you know, Sharon and Bong been talking to them about their dreams for the kids' church. Awesome. Man, they don't have to do it. We don't even pay them to do it. <laughs> All these people are unpaid. You know why? Because they do it out of faith. Because if we don't preserve this, the next generation, then how are we going to propagate and protect the doctrine, the gospel? It takes more than money sometimes. It takes everybody saying, hey, let's do it. Amen. There are, times, there are times we struggle to do it, so please pray for them. Don't make it hard. Some of us need to just pat them on the back. You inspire me. Amen. Amen. Ambassadors coming early in the morning, setting it up, and then making it that everyone have a seat. I mean, that's sacrifice. Everybody say, praise the Lord. Uh, you know what? For a moment, uh, why don't we just thank all our volunteers that do all these things so that we can have a legacy. Doesn't make sense. Some people say this, you know what? I, I got my own family radio. You know what? That's why you have a family. That's why you need to do it. 
Because the day will come that the church is the only entity that God has chosen in the last days to be instrument of the kingdom of God, propagating the gospel. That's why we have to preserve this. We have to sacrifice. You know what? Otherwise, why waste our time? The logistic department... You know, coming, carrying, the, I see the little boys coming here. I call them little, but they are big now, you know. <laughs> uh, setting it up, holding the speaker. You know what we are teaching you? That this comes by a sacrifice. You know, your sacrifice matters. You know, just like for this nation, our forefathers sacrificed so that we can have what we have today. And likewise, you can feel the presence, you can feel the sound because people sacrifice. You know, okay, okay, I get it. There are times where, where we complain. We are like, like the children of Israel, but, but we wrestle that out of our spirits. Don't, don't, don't have a bad attitude if, if Brother Charles says, why are you late? You know what he's trying to say? You are important. That's what he's trying to say. You are important because if you don't show up, we, we, we cannot start the... <laughs> oh Lord, help us. You know how you see things. Everyone can do their part. And then number three, which I already talked about, faith is always connected to giving. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead still speaks. Wow. By faith, he offered. These people that sacrificed, they offered. Why? They, are, they have this testimony because they gave, they offered. Amen. That this can go on. Their testimony speaks. Amen. Everybody say, praise the Lord. You know, there are times where your children say, Daddy, why you need to go? I say, you know what? Because we are a body of Christ. We are the family of God. We are not doing this individually. Why is it important? Because everybody deserves to hear the gospel. Amen. Why are we doing all these things? It's because every Sunday, we want to create an atmosphere where God can move. And then when God moves and all of us take our responsibility to make that connection with God, it becomes a strong connection and people can be healed. People can be touched by the Holy Ghost. The, the, the gospel will, will propel us after going out this place. You know, you, 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 you'll be surprised that when we are having church, we are praying for people. Angels are being loose. In this place, but because they are being loose because people offered prayers. With that in mind, let's lift our hands. National Day, let's pray for our nation. Let's stand. Come on, let's pray for this nation right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you, God, for this nation, Singapore. Lord, 57 years, 57 years, God, is a miracle, God. Within 57 years, God, this nation has become a first world country. Lord, we know we didn't arrive here, but just because of good people or just because, God, of, of good leadership, God, but it is because of your goodness, Lord. Lord, that have blessed this nation. And Father, you have a purpose for the nation of Singapore that you'll be the Antioch of the East. Lord, you'll be a hub, Lord, sending missionaries, Lord, connecting God, nations together right now in the name of Jesus. So Father, I pray right now, God, for our leaders, the, 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 the 5G leaders right now in the name of Jesus, God, I pray that you help them navigate, God, God, with this whole new culture that is a different culture, God, I pray and I thank you, God, that they are making plans right now. I pray, God, for every every parliamentary debate God that you raise up the righteous factor that Lord the righteous factor will speak for truth Father that will speak it plainly Father right now in the name of Jesus come on just pray for the Lord we pray for the next generation in fact this revival God that you promised us God Lord that this generation will be the generation that will reap it Father right now Lord all the sacrifices that the apostle Peter the apostle Paul 
Bishop Willoughby, Lord, will be for this next generation right now, God. Lord, that they will do mighty things in Christ. Lord, that you will raise them up like never before. Lord, again, God, I pray, Lord, I release the apostles. I release the prophet. I release the evangelists, the pastors. Lord, right now, and the teachers to do your work, God, in this nation right now. Bless this nation. Lord, have your hands upon this nation. And God, I'm asking you, God, to set the stage up, God, for revival in Southeast Asia right now. A billion lives, Father. Lord, that you will use our skills, that you use our giftings, God, everywhere in the world that we go out there to inspire, to teach, to instruct, Father, right now. In the name of Jesus, let's give God the glory. Let's give Him praise. We are in a flow right now. Pray for your generations. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I pray for that unborn child. I pray, God, for my grandchildren. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that they will come to an understanding, hallelujah, of who you are. No, fa- no man can draw you unless, you, Lord, no man can come to you unless you draw them. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you begin to draw our grandchildren. You begin to draw our children. You begin to draw them right now. God, they are worldly philosophies that is trying to de- Lord bring division from our family but God right now I pray God for truth I pray God that there will be champions of truth rising up in these last days come on let your voice out there's intercession right now in the name of Jesus Come on, some of you need to volunteer. Lord, I want to be that generation. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. That's it. Why don't you lay hands on somebody and lose them right now? In Jesus' name. Come on. I lose you right now to operate in your giftings. I lose you right now. Come on. In boldness. In the name of Jesus. Give signs, miracles, and wonders for follow you wherever you go. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. We are praying for this nation. We are praying for destiny for this church. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Here's what I want you to do. You know, there are people that, you know, they have their unborn. Amen. Nels, Adora, I want you to lay hands on your womb. You know, and all those people that have their unborn, pray right now in the Holy Ghost, right now in Jesus' name. Come on, pray. Pray for the unborns right now in the name of Jesus. Pray. And, and those of you, maybe you want to pray right now for unborn right now. Even in those that, that, that are in home Bible studies right now. In the name of Jesus, God. Lord, this child belongs to you. God, right now, this child belongs to you. All those that have unborn, lift your hands right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. They belong to you, God. They belong to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's, let's clap our hands unto the Lord right now. Let's clap our hands. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I, 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 just, I just want to share something with you in the Holy Ghost right now. The Lord prompted this in my spirit. I, I'm going to share it right now. You, you can either give by fear or give by faith. I don't know who this is for. Trust me, I haven't looked at the accounts yet. (laughs) 
Amen. I, I, I'm saying this again. Giving is the most basic discipleship element. You cannot say, I have faith, but don't give. Oh Lord, help me here. I, I'm just sharing something with you because something is going to happen in the spirit real soon. Amen. And I, 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 first of all, you know, Pastor Tim, I don't want your money. Who in the right mind come here and ask for money? I mean, like, come on, my job not easy. Leh. <sighs> I want you to be blessed. If, I, if it were me, I want you all to be blessed. And the only way to be blessed is say, these people need to learn how to operate in faith by starting giving. You know, this church was built on the foundation of a giving group of people. Amen. And I, I remember, you know, that, that, that sometimes, you know, sometimes we put our reason when God put a figure in our minds. Then we're like, oh, you know, let's look at the budget first. <laughs> That's giving by reason. <laughs> Amen. There are times where, where God just put a... How many of you know that God always gives you a figure? He knows your bank account. You don't really need to remind God by opening your bank account and show. Hey Lord, only like that. Eh? You know, and, and I also got to be very careful how I say it because it may seem, you know, that I'm, you know, people thinking that, I, you know, it's been a while since pastor preached about money. Hello? I, oh, somebody needs to hear this. Your obedience today will open up tomorrow's blessing. I, I can't even imagine what God's going to do to you. But it depends. Your destiny right now is right here at this moment. That when you obey God, don't worry, pastor is not going to cast you to collect offering. <laughs> I, I'm going to leave it as such to you. That when you give, something will happen in the spirit world, whether it's salvation for your entire family, I don't know. But something God is waiting for you at this moment so that your destiny can change like that. Amen. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. Faith is connected to giving. I'm not just talking about giving of money. I'm talking about everything. Your time. Your love. Everything. Where the Holy Ghost gives you liberty, do it. Amen. Find that peace of God. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Wave your hand at me. Amen. Again, let me say this again. You know, I'm not after your money. I want you to be blessed. This is the only way that you can connect your faith to God is by your giving. Amen. You may be seated, number four. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. <laughs> faith is persisting when I don't feel like it. Mm. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. I mean, doesn't that sound like us? <laughs> Living for God and all these uh, principles that we need to live, abide in, or for somebody that we have not seen yet. How many of you have seen Jesus? Physically. None of us. But we have the Holy Spirit that brings witness to us, telling us that He's real. Amen. That's why when I come home, this is our emb embassy. It reminds us that we're going home one day. Yes. That this is just a little bit of what heaven's going to be like. Amen. And, and I'm saying again, you know, serving the Lord is not going to be easy. Amen. You know, some people only serve the Lord when it feels good. But if it doesn't feel good, they don't do it. They worship their comfort more than their commitment towards God. Amen. You see, I've got to be honest here. It's not always easy to be nice to people. 
Only one yeah. Come on. I only hear one person. Yeah. It's not always easy, nice to somebody who is screaming out your head and you are inside the car with him. That's my driving instructor. Don't know why girls always have the easy one. The guys always they score so bad one. Pussing la, pussing la. Oh Lord, help me. I like. <laughs> that sometimes I really want to jam the brake, you know. I just really want to <laughs> stop it. <laughs> you know, but but anyway, Lord, help me. It's not easy. Amen. Sometimes it's not easy <laughs> to get along with my wife. You all better don't say amen because your wife next to you, huh? <laughs> amen. <laughs> and sometimes it's not easy taking care of kids. Sometimes you have to, you know, sometimes I forgot. Sometimes I wonder, God, why do I have four? It's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy talking about our feelings. Amen. I, I'm a, this is the walk of faith, okay? It doesn't feel easy at times, but we do it because it's the right thing to do. Amen. Amen. Come on, everybody say praise God. You know, again, let me help you understand. Successful people are simply ordinary people who do what the average people doesn't feel like doing. Let, let, let me repeat that again. Successful people are simply ordinary people who do what the average person doesn't feel like doing. And that's why they are successful. That means to be nice, to put on a smile. And they get the sales. <laughs> and you don't. Why? Because they do what was right. Amen. You know, have you ever gone to a food court or where they serve you and then the waiter give you a black face? Ruin my appetite. You know? So we got to be careful that if we're going to do what's right, you know what? This generation needs to hear this. You know, oh, I just let everything out. Everything I let out. They don't put boundaries in relationships. That's why relationships are destroyed. The more I have to be careful to be, it's called, you know what? Mood discipline. Hello? Amen. I mean, okay, you know, there are times I have to watch myself, you know. Ah, men also got mood one. Come on, thank, thank you for that overwhelming response. Uh, men, men also got mood, you know, they, that's why they call us grudgy old men. Amen. I mean, it's true. Sometimes I become like, you know, happy, like say, Dad, will you stop it? I say, okay, okay, okay. Become an old man. Then my wife say, you are a grouchy old man. Oh, you are. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I got to get a hold of myself in Jesus' name. <laughs> you know, then I go one corner and because of who you are, I give you glory. <laughs> you know, come on. There are times I'm such a grouch uh, that I have to bring my dog out for a walk just to go pray through. Amen. And after I'm praying, I say, wow, it's not that bad after all. Yeah, the world is not ending in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I got a family. Praise God. I got somebody to complain about. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And, and, and I'm saying this, it requires persistence, tenacity. You know, again, if you ask the Olympic sports athlete, there are days that he don't like to go for practice, but yet he did it. Amen. Spend hours of exercising. Can't we exercise godliness? Amen. Can't we exercise that? Can't we have self-control a little bit? And in, in, instead of saying negative words, you know, just hold back for a moment and exercise. That's what the scripture says. Exercise godliness. But some, you know what the, 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 the word tells us? Be true to yourself. Huh? You want, if I be true to myself, huh, I die already. If I be true to myself, I kill myself already. Myself is very deception, eh? deceptive. Eh? Yeah. I mean, one moment, good mood. One moment, bad mood. 
Amen. How many, how many of you know this? Is that what's going on? You, you, you got split personality. Uh. How many personalities are there inside you? And you can't trust yourself. Sometimes your feelings, you can't trust. The only thing that helps us in the reference point is God. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Young people, you need to listen to this. You don't just follow everything that you flow. One moment you feel like a cat. One moment next day you feel like a dog. I mean, crazy thoughts. You feel like an entrepreneur. The next moment you feel like something else. You want to be a, you know, a mother full time. You cannot trust that feeling. Amen. And then don't, 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 be, don't be fooled by social media. Telling you, follow me, follow me. Let's go, let's go around the world. Sekali Woodlands, uh, the picture down there is so nice, uh, but they say Woodlands. They are making you, make them want like, so when they have likes, they become influencer. The Lord help us. So sometimes, faith is persistent. Faith is refusing to give up. Faith is doing the right thing even when you are tired and when you are moody. Amen. Okay? Again, how do you develop persistence? The Bible tells us, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, it gives us an example of a guy by the name of Moses. He led an entire nation that had been in slavery for 400 years out across the wilderness through the Red Sea out on the Sinai Peninsula and they travel around in circles for 40 years waiting for God to get the people ready into the promised land. A 40-year waiting period, that's not short. Amen. How do you be persistent? The Bible tells us the last, the last phrase, the key is keep your eyes on God. Amen. Amen. If you are at the point of quitting, get into the presence of the King of Kings and keep your eyes on Him. He will give us perspective. He will give us new strength. He will give us refreshing. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Come on. Everybody say praise the Lord. Amen. Just do it. You know, again, I have to tell myself, last week, I had a sprained ankle, right? I, they say that the way to help heal your sprained ankle is to continue to walk. You know, I brought, you know, uh, uh, my dog go out to walk. Bad idea. Because the dog goes, oh! <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, oh, oh! But you know what? Let me tell you something. After all the pain, it's getting better. You just got to persist. Even though it's painful, just persist. Parenting, bringing them to tuition, all those things, very painful. Amen. Getting them up for Sunday school, dressing them up, it's painful. But you know what? There's going to be a reaping time. Amen. If you don't do what's right now, then how can you apply the principle of sowing and reaping? Amen. If you sow, you can get into the presence of the King of Kings and say, Father, I've sown. So I speak harvest over my children. I speak harvest. Amen. But, but God says, hey, you have not sown. How can I bless you when you have not sown? You have not prayed. You have not lived that example. You have not shown what faithful living looks like. Faithful living looks like. Even though it's inconvenient, we will do it. Amen. Amen. Inconvenient, we will do it because we are a people of faith and not feelings. Walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, just imagine the children of Israel. Moses give up. How? I mean, he's done, with, he's just got to deal with all the complainers. They also want to sack him. Amen. Your children will whine. You lead the way. You don't turn. You don't turn and look at the leadership. Why we all must do this? Lead the way. If somebody has not lead the way, we will not have this today. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. Keep believing when you don't see it. Obeying when you don't understand it. Keep persisting. When you don't feel like it, keep your eyes on God. 
push, push, push. Amen. Number five. <laughs> I like this one. Faith is thanking God before I receive it. Amen. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down. And after they were encircled for seven days. Again, Joshua started off walking. Walking. Nothing happened. Then after that, they start to praise. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him in the morning. They walk and they walk. And then the walls of Jericho come down. Let me tell you something. Sometimes... The way to persistence is praise your way. You know, the Bible says in Hosea chapter 10, verse 11, you don't have to turn there, say, Judah shall plow. That means praise, you plow through. Amen. Those difficult areas of your life, just praise God. Amen. Thank God that you're reminding that I need you, God. Amen. I praise you. Amen. Judah shall plow. Amen. That's why again, you know, when you are dealing with, with, with people that who don't understand it, they are looking for an example. They're looking and say, hey, I remember when we are going through a tough time, dad is in the room and he was praising God. He was showing us the example. They remember how well you pray. They can hear your voices. Amen. Because you are showing an example because the Christian life is not a walk of convenience. It's a walk of faith. Amen. Stop making it too easy for your children. Right. Oh Lord, help me. Can I share something with you? Liberty is to be earned. Hello? I want a handphone. Huh? Three-year-old handphone. Meow. Oh. Oh. Why don't you wait another 10 years? Yeah. And tell them the story about Abraham. Ah. He waited. <laughs> Amen. If you give them liberty too quickly, they don't want to appreciate the sacrifices. They will never understand what sacrifice looks like. Every time when going gets tough, they bail in a relationship because they don't understand what sacrifice looks like. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. And then you know what? The tougher it is, the battle they fight, the stronger they become. Amen. The only way sometimes for your young people to grow up is to fight. Fight the good fight of faith. I don't say go and fight with your friend. Eh? I'm not saying that you go MMA now. Eh? You know what I'm saying? Okay, pastor said must fight. Let's go MMA. You know, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about maintaining that, that, that perseverant attitude, that perseverance. You know, there's a difference between patience and perseverance. Patience is you can be patient about it and give up. Perseverance is I'm still hoping. I'm still hoping. I'm still hoping. I'm still hoping. Against, hope against hope. Amen. Amen. That's what it means. Amen. Because we need that kind of spirit to fight in relationships. Amen. I, I, you know what? When this guy do me wrong in a small group, you know what? I continue to hope against hope. I'm going to, you know what? Not give up on him because when I don't give up on him, I know he's the guy that, you know, uh, I mean, we call it bobo shooter. You know, shoot anyhow one, you know, and, and they can't shoot. But you know what? At the end of the day, he's still my brother. And then, you know what? We learn friendships and connections are bored out of adversary and they call them the bands of brothers you all remember HBO band of brothers oh lord I oh when only when you go to things together hardship that's why the bible says adversaries right uh, what brother uh, is it brothers is born out of adversary amen amen you know uh, I, I, I shared with groups many times I say that small groups is messy I wish to tell you that small because you're dealing with people. People are messy. Thank you for that overwhelming response. Haley. She's preaching along with me. Like this, you know, when we small group, the poor mother is trying to struggle. It's okay. Amen. I mean, hey, your kids will act up as and when you don't know when. My, uh, you know, when my, my, my babies, you know, when they're going, every time dinner time, they want to poo-poo one. Eh? Yeah, I don't understand of all the time, why? Yeah, hey, if you want a barn 
that is clean, there is no ox. Families are messy. You don't admit it, I say amen. I am messy. My wife will say amen. And she say, the house is so messy. It's okay. Life is messy. Come on, can, can I hear a big amen to that? Amen. Uh, I'm sorry, to, I'm not prophesying, but Josh and Nels, it's going to be messy. Wow, well, if you want to enjoy that relationship, otherwise you have a quiet home. You know what? Uh, you may not understand this, but when all my children go out, uh, I'm like, this is so weird. I mean, have you ever felt that feeling? Oh, it's just me. I say, hey, no noise, eh? Very sien, eh? Hey, 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 come on, come, 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 eat, eat. Mommy cooking, spaghetti, come. <laughs> they all then come, oh, when they come. But now not, we got another noisy one. Milo. <laughs> then later, the baby will come. Then, you know, it's going to get messy again. Yes! You know what messy means? Messy means life. Messy doesn't mean that. Messy means life. Yeah. Come on, everybody say praise the Lord. I mean, when the, your, 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 your messy means growth. Yes, yes. Amen. You know, when your children come with the socks, ah, that means it's growing. The, the, the feet is growing and the, 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 the clothes also growing and everything is growing. So it's growth. It's part of life. That's why we need persistence. Amen. And thank God. For those moments, thank God. Every time I cry, lift up my hands, I say, thank God for a family. Thank God. Thank God I got somebody to complain about. Thank God I got a wife for 48 years. She's been tolerating me. Amen. Thank God. So I think this is very important for us to start thanking God instead of getting bitter. Okay? Here's my last point. Okay, I know it's late, but this is my best point. Faith is trusting even I don't get it. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 39 to 40. And all these things, having obtained a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise. God having provided something better for us, that they should not be made perfect apart from us. See, some people have this weird theology, just because you're going to a bad time, it means that you're doing something wrong. Maybe you're doing everything right. There's conflict in the homes. You're standing for truth, there's conflict. Sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm just afraid that I, as a parent, I become a UN. You said UN, United Nations, I become a peace lover than a peacekeeper. There's a very difference to it. Eh? Peace, love, eh? don't fight, eh? don't fight. Let's love, let's love. No, love rejoices in truth. Hello? Amen. There are times where we have to suffer for righteousness sake. Oh, everybody say praise God. The Bible says faith is trusting even though I don't get it. Amen. Everybody say praise God. <laughs> you know, again, not all the times whatever we pray will come to pass. Amen. God in you. God in touch. I don't get it. Why good things might happen to bad people? Don't get it. But I trust God. Faith expect things will change. Trust is to accept. Things that it is, and just continue to live by faith and not by sight. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Kelvin, I don't. I don't try to fake it. I don't. You know, I don't know whether you remember Sunday we were talking to her and you about your small group. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right? And then we heard the news. I, I, I couldn't shake it. I don't. But I do know that God sees your faithfulness. Amen. This is not the end yet. There's still life. There's so many things in life I don't get it. 
But does this mean this person is in sin? No, he may be doing everything that's right. You know, could it be that God can test, could it be that God can trust him with trials? And he's still here standing. His children are still here standing. Asher, I want to let you know how proud that pastor is about you. I don't get it. But then the scriptures say, trust me, even though it's painful. Wow, I don't. I really don't. So again, this is a walk of faith. It's not for those that want things to be blessed all the time. Sometimes the blessing will come only when everything ends. Amen. I'm speaking to this to some of you because there's going to be tough times coming ahead. I don't know who is this for. And you will be challenged with your faith. And all kinds of thoughts will come to your head saying, did I do what's right? You know, this is a fight. Oh, what's going on? You know, I don't see it. Lord, I don't see it. It's a fight of faith. You got to get down on your knees and begin to say, God, touch my faith one more time. Help my unbelief. It's okay. But I do not want you to fake it out with us. I want you to come talk to us. I may not have the answer, but at that moment in time, my faith can heal you. My faith can take you another week, brother. My faith can keep on getting on and pushing you through another week. Amen. And someone else need to touch him again. Someone else. Come on, because we are the bands of brothers. Amen. Everybody say praise the Lord. You know what? When it's going tough, come on, let's stay together. Let's stand together. Amen. Let, let, let me repeat. I, I know I'm taking a bit of time here, but I'm going to repeat a few things. Faith is first believing when I don't see it. Faith is obeying when I don't understand it. Faith is connected to giving. Faith is persisting when I don't feel like it. Faith is thanking God before I receive it. And faith is trusting if I don't get it. Stand to our feet. Come on, just let your voice go right now. Let's connect to God. Amen. Come on, just lift your hands right now. Connect. Connect. Connect to God right now. The work of faith. The work of faith is not an easy one. Come on. You need to pray. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, Father, right now, in these last days. I pray, God, for tabernacle of joy, saints' faith, that they fail not during times of crisis. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, grab hold of somebody. Let's pray together as a body right now. Let's agree in Jesus' name. Let's become that bands of brothers right now. You're not alone. Life is too short for us to do this alone. Come on, let your voice out. Let that need rise above. Let's cry upon the Lord right now. Come on, let your voice out for a moment. The miracles, signs and wonders But if not But if not Cause me to stand for you Father right now In the name of Jesus Come on, let your voices out right now. Someone needs a miracle. Let's call upon God right now to intervene. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, 
Hora kasanariara batora kasanara. Hora kasanariara batora kasanariara batora kasan. Hiara kasanara kiara kotora kasanariara batora kasanara. Hiara, come on, let your voice out for a moment right now. Hiara kasanda diara batora kasanda diara batora kasanda. Hara kasanda nana hiara batora kasanda hiara batora kasanda. In the name, in the name of Jesus, help us, lead us, God. I pray for our faith. Can you not feel now? Hara kasanda diara batora kasanda diara batora kasanda. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, God, have your way. Do your will. Review yourself, Lord, like never before. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why don't we just give God the praise and the honor? Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's practice what we preach. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We recognize and we understand. Father, come on, let's thank Him right now. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you, God, that this is not the end, but this is the beginning. Come on, let's give him praise all over this place. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Here's what we want to do right now. Okay, uh, before we close, I want you to grab, if it's appropriate, grab a hold of your neighbor on your left, on the right. We're going to pray for their faith. Amen. This is a preventive prayer. Amen. Grab hold of somebody real quickly. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for their faith not to fail. Just like you prayed, God. Just like you prayed, God. God, you prayed, God, for the disciples. You prayed for Simon Peter. I pray during crisis, let their faith not fail. In the name of Jesus. Bless my brother right now, Lord. I pray. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus name. Bless them right now. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Let's give him the praise and let's give him the glory. Amen. Next week, we're going to be touching about logic versus faith. Can they coexist? God bless everyone. Shake hands and be friendly to your neighbor on your left and the right. God bless you.